The resources for the Calculus Videos project include what we call intellectual need-provoking tasks. In this video, I'll describe the concept of intellectual need and how we used it to design tasks for students to work on. To get started, let's look at a problem from a high school math textbook. The CCSS modeling text indicates that this problem is supposed to help students learn about mathematical modeling. We can ask, what might students learn from engaging in this activity? I'd suggest that the students would probably be practicing how to write recursive and explicit formulas from a given list of numbers. But they have no reason to think about the process of modeling. There is no need for them to do so. They're told exactly what they're supposed to do. Now, what if we tweak this problem a bit? Instead of telling students what to do, what if we ask them to figure out how many bricks will be in the 200th and 357th row? There are various ways that the students could investigate these questions. For example, they could skip count by two. But by asking them for values in multiple high-numbered rows, they'll likely feel a need for a faster way to do the computation and to systematize the computation. They'll experience a need for explicit or recursive formulas. So they're more likely to learn why and when mathematical models are useful and how to create these models. Let's look at another example of a task. Here is a task that was intended to help students learn about the concept of prime factorization. What might students learn from engaging in this activity? Students can complete this procedure by dividing on a calculator and learn how to write the prime factorization, but they wouldn't necessarily understand why prime factorization is an important thing to understand. Here is a revised task. This task provides students an opportunity to experience the efficiency of using prime factorization as a means to compare products of numbers without actually computing each product. Using their existing knowledge, students may come up with different ways to solve the problem. However, strategies such as computing the product and guessing various compositions and decompositions would be tedious, and students would likely appreciate the directedness of expressing each product as a product of primes to compare values leading them to realize the power of the uniqueness of prime factorization. Let's look at one more example, this time from calculus. Here is the intro section from a chapter on limits. Imagine that this is a student's introduction to the concept of limits. In the previous section, the textbook showed how to find the slope of a tangent line to a parabola at a particular point using a limit, and shows how to find the instantaneous velocity of a falling ball using a limit. So in that section, students were never given the opportunity to feel confused or to ponder anything. And in this section, it starts off with the invitation to, let's investigate the behavior of F. The following imaginary conversation wouldn't be at all surprising if that previous section constituted my students' introduction to limits. If we asked our students, when would you compute a limit? They'd probably say, hmm, when things are really small? mostly when my teacher tells me to compute a limit. If we asked why limits are important or useful, they might say, uh, because things can get really small, and my teacher will tell me to compute a limit. Really? Uh, something about tangents, but I'm not really sure what those are, why would care, or how limits would be useful for solving tangents. From that introductory section, students would mostly take away some notion of how they might approximate the value of a limit when asked to do so, but they never felt the need for a limit. So the question for teachers is, how can we help students develop an understanding of why limits are important and useful, and when they might want to use them? The theory is that we want to put our students in a problematic situation, one where they don't immediately know how to solve the problem. Like in the patio building activity, instead of telling them to write a formula, we ask them to compute an answer that is difficult to compute, and then let them use any method they'd like. This provokes a sense of disequilibrium in the student's mind, and the student wants to resolve this disequilibrium. That is, they feel a need to compute efficiently, to find structure, to explain why, to be certain, or to communicate. These needs are part of what is called intellectual need. Intellectual need is an internal drive experienced by a learner to solve a problem. As Dan Meyer described it, 
If a mathematical concept is the aspirin, then how do I create the headache? The Calculus Videos project has created a task in supporting materials for each topic that is designed to provoke a feeling of intellectual need for the students. Here is an example from the topic of constant rate of change. The students are shown a pitcher pouring water into a cup. Then the students are asked to describe the rate of change of the height of the water with respect to the volume of the water that is added to the cup. Their options are that the rate is constant, increasing, decreasing, both increasing and decreasing, or something else. Many students say that the rate is first increasing and then decreasing because the top of the water in the cup appeared to rise quickly and then more slowly. But that perspective is comparing the height of the water to the amount of time that has elapsed. The rate is actually constant, and understanding why this is requires attending to the two quantities in the situation and what it means for a rate of change to be constant. In short, the confusion that students will likely experience from this problem is designed to provoke a feeling of intellectual need for the concept of constant rate of change. The Calculus Videos project has created an intellectual need-provoking task for each set of videos. These tasks can be used in class, either prior to or after watching the videos, as a way to challenge students and to engage them in discussion and problem solving. In addition to the tasks themselves, we have also created videos of a pair of calculus students working on the task. In these videos, the students discuss the problem and demonstrate various ways of thinking about it. Along the way, they enact the various ways of reasoning, some correct, some incorrect, that calculus students typically use with these problems. When our own students watch these videos, they are forced to wrestle with these various ways of thinking and, by doing so, have an additional opportunity to experience an intellectual need for the underlying concept. In this video, I've described the concept of intellectual need, shown you examples of intellectual need-provoking tasks, and shown you some of the resources available from the Calculus Videos project. We hope you find these resources useful to engage your own students in reasoning about calculus concepts.